this is Michaela from Team Retro where we like retro games and we like the devices that bring them to us. Now I've spent the month of February focused in on the Steam Deck and my four part series on this particular gaming device has kind of bled into March a little bit due to personal commitments but I wanted to see this through to the end and wrap up my four part series on the Steam Deck. And so our final episode for Steam Deck Month is going to be a tutorial on how to swap out the hard drive on your Steam Deck for a larger one. So this is for people who may have purchased the 64 or 256 model Steam Deck and found that they were just running out of storage or wanted to enhance their storage capabilities without having to rely on an SD card. And thankfully this is not as hard or as intimidating as one might think. I was actually really nervous about opening up my Steam Deck at first, but you don't have to go too far into the device to swap out the hard drive, so I was able to gather up my courage so that I can bring you this tutorial. And while there are always risks to opening up your device, if you have decided that you need to enhance your internal storage, then this video is for you. So let's dive in and let's get to work. So to start, you will need a USB drive and a Windows computer because we're going to need to create a recovery image from the Steam website. And I'll include a link in the video description as to where you can get the Steam Deck recovery image. And then you just need to go ahead and use a Windows imaging program in order to flash the recovery image to a flash drive. So here I'm using Belena Etcher and you can use this or you can use Win32 Disk Imager or Raspberry Pi Imager, whichever gets the job done for you. I find Belena Etcher to be the easiest one. And once the USB drive is flashed, go ahead and set it aside. We won't need it until after we've replaced the hard drive in the Steam Deck. Now let's go ahead and prep our workspace. You're going to want a nice clean surface in order to set the Steam Deck down on. And if you have cases or protectors or anything like that, you're going to want to go ahead and take them off. Here I am removing my D-brand kill switch case because I'm going to need to remove the screws on the back plate and obviously the case is preventing that. So once I go ahead and take this off, we'll be all set and ready for this procedure. Now just for an added layer of safety, we're going to put the battery into storage mode. So we're going to go ahead and go to power and shut down. And once the Steam Deck is shut down, we're going to actually turn it back on, but we're going to boot to the BIOS. So in order to do that, we're actually going to hold the power button and the volume up button at the same time. All right, welcome to the Steam Deck BIOS. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to go down to Setup Utility. So we can use the D-pad as well as the A button to navigate this BIOS menu. And once we get there, we're actually going to go down to the Power tab. And then from there, we're going to see Battery Storage Mode. We're gonna hit A on Enter. And then we're going to hit A to proceed, and it's actually going to power down our Steam Deck. Now from this point on, the Steam Deck will not turn on until it is plugged into a charger. So now we are ready to open up the Steam Deck. And what I actually recommend you do is take the Steam Deck case that came with your device 
and go ahead and open it up because what you see here is actual outlines of the Steam Deck dimensions. And so if we were to lay the Steam Deck face down, we'll actually have the perfect surface in which to operate on the Steam Deck without worrying about messing up the joysticks or the other buttons. And one last thing that we need to do is make sure we take the SD card out of the unit because if we try to open this up with the SD card in, there is a chance that we could rip our SD card in half and we definitely don't want to do that. So what I'm going to do here is take my iFixit cover and I'm going to set this right next to the Steam Deck because I'm going to use that as a catch for my screws because I don't want to mess up screw order here because all of these screws are different sizes. Now that said, all you'll really need is a small Phillips head screwdriver for every single screw that we're going to be removing. So let's go ahead and start with the four screws in the middle and we're gonna go ahead and take those out first and then immediately followed by the four screws on the end. And you could see here that I'm placing them in the iFixit cover in the order that I'm taking them out. So when I go to put them back later, I'll know exactly which screw goes where. Now we're going to use a guitar pick to pry off the back plate of the Steam Deck. So let's just go ahead and start near the L2 and R2 buttons or the R2 and R2 buttons depending on where you want to go in first. And you just want to unclip the Steam Deck very slowly and you'll notice that it'll just get easier as you go along. Just try not to break the clips. Take this really, really slow. And again, this is the part where I have to reiterate, make sure you've taken your SD card out because this is the step of the process where if you didn't take the SD card out, you could break it in half. So just go ahead, take your time, make sure you're ready to do this. And then once you start, you'll notice that you'll be able to take the back off pretty easily. And there's nothing on the back that is ribbon cabled or tied to anything. So once you get it off, you'll have pretty easy access to the internals. Now our next step is to take this metal shield off. But in order to do that, we need to remove a little bit of this aluminum tape because there is a screw holding this metal shield in place that the aluminum tape is covering. So be very careful, we want to reuse this. And you could see here that I'm using a pair of tweezers to pull back the tape. Unfortunately, I did rip mine a little bit, but it was not enough to prevent me reusing it. And you could see here that I have exposed the screw that's keeping this shield in place. So let's go ahead and remove that. And then we're also going to remove the other two screws on the outside that is also keeping this shield in place. Now that the shield is off really quick, I just want to show you what happened with the aluminum tape. You could see I ripped it a little bit while I was peeling it back. However, I am confident that I'll be able to put that back together and reuse it, so I'm not too terribly worried. So here are the internals with the shield removed. And 
The first thing we want to do now that we have access to the device is we want to disconnect the battery. We need to do this before we disconnect the hard drive because we don't want any accidental shorts or anything bad to happen here. So I just want to make sure that the battery is disconnected and I highly advise you do the same thing. And I'm not taking any chances here. I'm using a combination of a guitar pick and my fingernail just to make sure that the battery connection is completely severed. Now that we've done that, we can go ahead and we can remove the M.2 drive. And so that's held in place by a solitary screw. We just need to take that out. And you'll also notice that there is a small shield covering the hard drive. We are going to need to go ahead and save that. So let's take that off and let's set that to the sides because we're going to use that with our new hard drive. And then we can go ahead and just gently pull the old hard drive out. And here you can see it's a Transcend 256 gigabyte. We're gonna go ahead and we're going to install a one terabyte Sabrent drive. And so here is the hard drive. It goes for about $150 for the one terabyte model. And it is pretty beautifully packaged. So let's just go ahead and open this up. And there she is in all her glory. So let's take her out of this beautiful packaging. And the one thing I like about this is that this packaging is reusable. So I'm gonna go ahead and store the old hard drive in this case for now. Now let's go ahead and put this aluminum shield on the new hard drive you may have to finagle a little bit to get it in place but with a little bit of resistance it should slide right back on and then we'll go ahead and pop this new hard drive in the steam deck and prepare to button everything up so let's start by screwing the new hard drive in place Now we can go ahead and plug the battery back in before we seal everything up. If we forget to do this, our Steam Deck won't turn on unless it's plugged in, so we need to make sure that battery is connected. Now let's put the heat shield back in place and let's screw that back in. Now you only need to screw these in hand tight. You don't need to keep going once you get resistance because then you could end up pushing these screws into the internals or through the other side of the steam deck and you don't want that. So once you have a little bit of resistance, you can stop and move on to the next screw. Now go ahead and replace the aluminum tape and you could see here even though I ripped it a little bit I was able to take the two pieces and push them back together and everything looks good. So we can actually go ahead and we can close up the unit. So let's take the back plate and let's clip that right back into place and you can push the clips in until they click and you should be nice and sealed and ready to put those screws back up. Just make sure you know which ones are the middle ones and which ones are the end ones because they are two completely different sizes and you don't want to mess that up.
Okay, now that we're all sealed up, let's plug the Steam Deck back into a charger so that we can get the battery out of storage mode. And that will automatically power on the unit, but it's going to recognize that the hard drive does not have an operating system on it. And so that's where this USB drive we made earlier is going to come in handy. We're going to use a USB-C hub to plug this into the Steam Deck. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to boot to this recovery image. So pressing OK on this error message will bring us into the BIOS. Now let's go ahead and plug our USB drive in. And then we are going to go to the boot manager. And from there, we're going to choose to boot from the USB device. And this is going to take a little bit of time to boot into the recovery manager, depending on the read write speeds of your USB drive. So if you find yourself on this Steam Deck logo for a little bit of time, don't fret. It's just booting up. Go use the bathroom, grab a cup of coffee or your beverage of choice. But don't take too long because it shouldn't take any longer than five, maybe seven minutes total to boot up into the recovery image. And once you're there, it should look familiar because it's going to look like a Steam Deck in desktop mode. All you have to do is click to re-image the Steam Deck and then confirm and things will just go ahead and do their thing and this recovery script is going to run for a little bit but once it's done you'll get a nice nifty little message saying that the steam deck has been re-imaged and you can go ahead and click proceed to reboot and it will not reboot to the usb drive it will reboot right to the hard drive and you'll know you've made it when you get to the welcome screen so you can go ahead and unplug the drive and select your language and set up the steam deck as usual and i would plug it into the charger just because that's me but other than that you should be good to go and you should be ready to rock this new hard drive and so that'll do it for this video. If you followed this guide, hopefully your installation went well and I was able to help you get from zero to hero and you are installing games onto your shiny new hard drive as we speak. And so with that, there's one more Steam Deck video I'm looking forward to making and that's going to be my final review and verdict about this device after using it for about three quarters of a year and let me know what you think in the comments below is a hard drive upgrade like this worth it or do you prefer just to use an external sd card to expand your storage but that'll do it for this video thank you so much for watching and please feel free to continue the conversation over in the steam machine discord link will be in the video description and that's where you could find me hanging out in between videos. Again, thank you so much for watching. And if this video was helpful to you in any way, please be sure to like and subscribe. Until next time, bye for now, and don't stop believing.